In order to comprehend ponderogenic pathways of contagion, especially those acting in a wider social context, let us observe the roles and personalities of individuals we shall call spellbinders, who are highly active in this area in spite of their statistically negligible number. Spellbinders are generally the carriers of various pathological factors, some characteropathies and some inherited anomalies. Individuals with malformations of their personalities frequently play similar roles, although the social scale of influence remains small, family or neighborhood, and does not cross certain boundaries of decency. Spellbinders are characterized by pathological egotism. Such a person is forced by some internal causes to make an early choice between two possibilities. The first is forcing other people to think and experience things in a manner similar to his own. The second is a feeling of being lonely and different, a pathological misfit in social life. Sometimes the choice is either snake charming or suicide. Triumphant repression of self-critical or unpleasant concepts from the field of consciousness gradually gives rise to the phenomena of conversive thinking, or paralogistics, paramoralisms, and the use of reversion blockades. They stream so profusely from the mind and mouth of the spellbinder that they flood the average person's mind. Everything becomes subordinated to the spellbinder's overcompensatory conviction that they are exceptional, sometimes even messianic. An ideology emerges from this conviction, true in part, whose value is supposedly superior. However, if we analyze the exact functions of such an ideology in the spellbinder's personality, we perceive that it is nothing other than a means of self-charming, useful for repressing those tormenting self-critical associations into the uh, subconscious. The ideology's instrumental role in influencing other people also serves the spellbinder's needs. The spellbinder believes that he will always find converts to his ideology, and most often they are right. However, they feel shock or even paramoral indignation when it turns out that their influence extends to only a limited minority while most people's attitude to their activities remains critical, pained, and disturbed. The spellbinder is thus confronted with a choice. Either withdraw back into his void, or strengthen his position by improving the effectiveness of his activities. The spellbinder places on a high moral plane anyone who has succumbed to his influence and incorporated the experiential method he imposes. He showers such people with attention and property, if possible. Critics are met with moral outrage. It can even be proclaimed that the compliant minority is in fact the moral majority, since it professes the best ideology and honors a leader whose qualities are above average. Such activity is always necessarily characterized by the inability to foresee its final results. Something obvious from the psychological point of view because its substratum contains pathological phenomena, and both spellbinding and self-charming make it impossible to perceive reality accurately enough to foresee results logically. However, spellbinders nurture great optimism and harbor visions of future triumphs similar to those they enjoyed over their own crippled souls. It is also possible for optimism to be a pathological symptom. In a healthy society, the activities of spellbinders meet with criticism effective enough to stifle them quickly. However, when they are preceded by conditions operating destructively upon common sense and social order, 
such as social injustice, cultural backwardness, or intellectually limited rulers, sometimes manifesting pathological traits. Spellbinders' activities have led entire societies into large-scale human tragedy. Such an individual fishes an environment or society for people amenable to his influence, deepening their psychological weaknesses until they finally join together in a ponderogenic union. On the other hand, people who have maintained their healthy critical faculties intact, based upon their own common sense and moral criteria, attempt to counteract the spellbinders' activities and their results. In the resulting polarization of social attitudes, each side justifies itself by means of moral categories. That is why such common sense resistance is always accompanied by some feeling of helplessness and deficiency of criteria. The awareness that a spellbinder is always a pathological individual should protect us from the known results of a moralizing interpretation of pathological phenomena, ensuring us an objective criterion for more effective action. Explaining what kind of pathological substratum is hidden behind a given instance of spellbinding activities should enable a modern solution to such situations. It is a characteristic phenomenon that a high IQ generally helps a person to be more immune to spellbinding activities only to a moderate degree. Actual differences in the formation of human attitudes to the influence of such activities should be attributed to other properties of human nature. The most decisive factor in assuming a critical attitude is good basic intelligence, which conditions our perception of psychological reality. We can also observe how a spellbinder's activities husk out amenable individuals with an astonishing regularity. We shall later return to the specific relations that occur among the spellbinder's personality, the ideology he expounds, and the choices made by those who easily succumb. More exhaustive clarification thereof would require separate study within the framework of general ponderology, a work intended for specialists, in order to explain some of those interesting phenomena which are still not properly understood today.